Hi, my name is Maddy Vaughan and I'm travelling to Bosnia and Serbia to find out about the youth living in the former Yugoslavia. I'm exploring three main themes which are unemployment, education and political influence. You know, we were br brought up with this idea, if you can get out, you should get out. Serbia is not a war zone anymore. The war is done. It's been like... 20 years ago, like, we're, we're done with that. The Balkans is no stranger to conflict. A region plagued by war means that many tourists are apprehensive to travel there, which is evident in the fact that only 9,000 British nationals visit Bosnia every year. Yet the war is over and there are far more pressing issues which continue to be overlooked in today's world, such as the lack of economic prospects for young people living in the Balkans. The region on a whole has a high youth unemployment rate, over 55% in Bosnia, and many young people leave their home countries after graduating to seek employment overseas. The economic situation for young people is costing the region, as they are losing a young, talented workforce as well as economic gain. It is estimated that youth immigration is costing Serbia up to 1.2 billion euros per year. My interviewees give me an insight as to what being young in the Balkans has been like for them, and how these issues are indeed widespread. I hope to explore steps that could be taken to reduce these statistics and make the region more economically prosperous for young people, in addition to belittling the stigma about travelling to post-conflict countries, as problems like these cannot be addressed if the world still views the Balkans in its past. In Bosnia, education is a way in which segregation can still exist. Subjects such as history, languages, social studies and literature can be easily manipulated to promote separation and limit cohesion. In Travnik, the school is divided by a metal fence and the scar of war. Students are in the same school but study separately, reading different books and learning in different languages. There are at least 50 schools around Bosnia in which students of different ethnicities are separated in educational ways, but are still under the same roof. This kind of divide is embedded into the education of Bosnian youth and hinders the ability of Bosnia to build an inclusive society. Isn't that so silly? Yeah. Let's, uh, just actually, I have a funny example funny, funny example about that. Uh, so my friend from university and I, we went to Mostar to visit our friend. Yeah. And we just, oh, there was like a statue of uh, Katarina Kosacha, which was, I call her, oh, she's the last Bosnian queen. And he, and the veteran was like, oh no, she, she was the last Croatian queen. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. How is this? I thought it was Bosnia. Yeah, it's like different versions of history, yeah. yeah. History, especially recent history, is a difficult subject to teach in Bosnian schools, as the population was all affected in different ways and everybody has different accounts. It is common for different versions of history to be taught to different audiences, yet this creates problems over what or who to believe. History very long time, like six, seven years ago yeah. last time, and we stopped somewhere in the 80s. Yeah. After the Cold War, no, we, that's when we stopped. I didn't do this uh, research thing. I wouldn't even be that aware what was actually yeah. going on. Yeah. Because you hear one version of a story. Serbia has made great strides in ensuring universal access to education, and enrollment into basic education in Serbia is over 95%. According to an assessment from the World Bank's Human Capital Index, Serbia's score is at the same level required for the European Union and is considerably higher than neighbouring countries in the Western Balkans. Uh, the college I entered was for ecological engineering oh, and, wow. and we got history of art in um, high school and I really like that too. But again, it's not really something you can like yeah. do here, especially here. And so I was like, drama, okay, I, I really love that and I've loved that more than any other subject. But I would say primary school here, very nice. As you get older, you kind of get to see the, what, what we're lacking yes. in what, what aspects we're lacking in. Uh, but I think high school is where you truly get to see that, especially the yeah. high school I went to. Very bad. I, yeah. I, I, I don't like our school system. No. It's very much just learn and then say it back to the teacher and forget it immediately. There's a lot of variety to what we do. What I like about Serbia is that we can like, there are a lot of options for like free education. For young people in Serbia, it's often hard to find a job and they rarely have the opportunity to find a permanent one. They often work outside a field they have received formal qualifications for. My job, I would say. Uh, so my mom's friend opened a, like a school for, yeah. where you can get like extra classes. 
and they needed an English teacher and since like she knew that I speak English very well she offered me a job there if you had the right connections it's easier yes get. especially that oh the connections here yeah. work wonders yeah especially political connections I would yes. say yeah those are the strongest yeah. and it's really it's really everybody knows about it but nobody says anything about yeah. it because yeah it's just According to the publication Youth in Serbia 2018-2019, 74% of young people in Serbia say that connections are crucial for finding employment. Almost 75% of young people in Serbia want to or intend to immigrate due to a bad economic situation and doubt that social economic conditions will improve. Youth emigration could cost Serbia up to 1.2 billion euros per year and many young people will inevitably face the question of whether to stay or to leave. <laughs> well, honestly, I would love to stay in Serbia. Like when I was little, I was just I was dreaming of just going to America or somewhere. But now, honestly, I fell in love with Serbia. With the, I mean, specifically the Serbian mentality, the the way we still have some kind of like freedom of thought. Yeah. Our music, our literature, everything is kind of like really it's not restricted. We have so much freedom to say what we want and not get like. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and um, I, I, I honestly don't know what to say. I mean, for the thing that I want to do, of course, I would love to do it in Serbia. I know I wouldn't get enough money, but I, I don't really care about that much because yeah. I'm really ecology is something I'm really passionate about. So it's really not about money. Yeah. I just need enough to get by. Yeah. I really think that I will be able to achieve better things offline, not here. I do want to leave Serbia, especially because I want to do theater and drama. And I feel like the most, like the two places where most people go is America or Britain. It, it's lots of rich kids because they want to get out of the country. Um, then, then they're all hoping to go to Germany or Austria and make a better life for themselves and what they yeah. could do here. It's a place of nightlife, right? And young people, they can't work here, but they can come here for a weekend and have fun. Everything is cheap. But, you know, at the end of the day, I wouldn't have wanted to stay here and work here. Yeah. So it was easier just getting out now than hanging around and yeah. regretting it later. <laughs> yeah. um, and my sister, I have an older sister who left Serbia, uh, first to Slovenia, and then she studied in the Netherlands. And now she found a job there. And so I think she was especially lucky with getting scholarships to, to, yeah. to both those places and finding a job. So I feel like she would have struggled here to find a job with what she wants to do, which is like science. So uh, yeah, a lot. I know a lot of young people who have struggled to find yeah. jobs. You know, we were br brought up with this idea, if you can get out, you should get out yeah. of the country. And it's like, you, you, it forms a little bit of a detachment from the country yeah and it's like oh this is just this transitional state which I'm in I'm just going to move away from here for younger generations in the Balkans the fall of communism and following conflicts were hoped to open a new world of opportunity however Bosnia has the highest rate of youth unemployment in the world driven by widespread corruption nepotism and economic stagnation because of the complexity and number of government structures, there is more room for corruption and not enough ways of ensuring control, transparency and accountability. Corruption and nepotism have impinged on Bosnia's judicial system, yet nothing is done to fix it, leaving a country of frustrated citizens, many of whom have given up hope and have decided to move elsewhere. So this is a part-time job now. I'm working here during the summer, during the summer vacation, doing something to get my allowance, something so I don't like... I'm like... I'm like 23, if I can work, I can work anything, I'm like, I don't feel ashamed doing nothing, yeah, it's a really cool job, you meet a lot of people, you meet a lot of friends from, from very different countries, yeah. Many young Bosnians believe and hope the situation in Bosnia will improve, but still intend to leave, as staying seems to make no sense if they themselves want their own future. But we need the infrastructure. Yeah. I have a lot of work experience, but I only have maybe six months that are rented out. It will improve, but a lot of people are leaving, you know, yeah. 60,000 people. So, like, to work in Bosnia and Herzegovina is really the same as, like, being a slave. Slave to a private company to 
do like uh, a lot of work for 500 euros do sketches do 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 things you you really got get like really bad paycheck for it it's really bad but people like tend to go elsewhere because like companies in Europe or somewhere will like uh, pay you really well to educate you about everything yeah so uh, you are really uh, really great asset for them for yeah. them to like educate you because you're a good worker you have yeah. a, like a strong degree like mechanical engineering is a really strong degree you can get jobs everywhere there are organizations and people who are trying to provide opportunities for young people in Bosnia. Changing the Story aims to work with young activists and aspiring filmmakers in Bosnia and Herzegovina to encourage sharing of stories through film. The British Embassy are offering nine fully funded scholarships for talented youth to study post-grad in the UK, as long as they return and use their new skills and knowledge for the benefit of the country. Yeah. People who are not educated are staying, yeah. or the ones who have you know, connections. This is a crisis, as Bosnia is losing its future and young, educated people have so much to offer. But why is this still a problem today? And why are jobs so inaccessible? And why hasn't significant progress been made? So the first problem about Bosnia and Herzegovina is like our psych psychology. Because before the war, uh, we were a communist country and everything was owned by uh, the country, all companies, everything. We had a lot, like a lot of huge companies that did like, uh, there's one company that did like uh, electrical work from all North Africa and Agrimis, that was a huge company, very well known. There was a lot of military companies that uh, make ammo, everything, there's a few now, and they're working also well. But during that transitional period from uh, communism to capitalism, the psychology is different. Yeah. And most people like uh, cannot uh, assimilate to that they all like most of the people now like older generation younger guys are like getting it but the older guys are like always depending on the country to get them jobs to get them security everything but that's not how it works in like a democratic country so the psychology of everything is really messed up Bosnia and Herzegovina has the world's most complicated political system and there are four levels of governance the presidency of Bosnia consists of a representative of each of the three members one Bosniak, one Croat and one Serb. Bosnia has a weak central state and strong entities. Therefore, its functionality could be described as somewhat dysfunctional due to its complex infrastructure. Well, I disagree with everything that's going on, but you know, especially since I don't come from a background, I don't have connections yeah. or, or I don't have any personal interest in being politically affiliated in any yeah. way. Younger gen generations are starting to build up, starting to make their own things, make their own projects. So I hope it's if it's getting better, but our whole political system that was like probably a mean to stop the war, like Dayton agreement was like really mean to stop the war because, and now we have like two entities, three presidents, every entity has its own government, every, they're like uh, cantons, like we have like so many divisions to the local point where we have so many politicians, so many, there's a great percentage of uh, people who work for the government and it's really draining the tax money, everything, so people cannot move on, you cannot get uh, better healthcare systems, everything, so it's really, really sucks, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's the whole problem. And also the corruption is really bad because if you have, if you logically like comprehend everything, if you have like, uh, a system that is complicated like this one is it's really a fertile ground ground for corruption for yeah. criminals for everything so everything like goes on a wheel yeah 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 when yeah. you have complicated systems like this in general you're getting corruption you're Too complicated uh, they always re-elect the same people um, young people don't vote that much According to Bosnia's constitution, Annex 4 of the Dayton Agreement, Bosnia and Herzegovina is a republic which operates in accordance with the law and with free democratic elections. But the government bureaucracy is so complicated that the country is buckling under its inefficiency. The Dayton Agreement was not a democratic agreement. It was not even an agreement negotiated by Bosnian citizens or written in Bosnian. It was pushed by US and other European powers. The Dayton Agreement hoped to give younger generations the possibility of transcending the ethno-political division that have plunged it into the war. It is argued that the Dayton Peace Agreement made such a state where the political elites play a dominant role in the legislative and executive branches of government. 
The EU has opened up to the prospect of taking new members from the Western Balkans, most likely Serbia and Montenegro, with the hope by the year 2025. EU leaders believe it will allow them to export stability, democracy and economic development to their neighbours. Opinion polls suggested 26% of people surveyed in the region don't believe that their countries will in fact ever join the EU. I went to visit an NGO in Belgrade who believe the EU is a good thing for Serbia, as the country will be improved in many socio-economic ways. However, they mentioned that the EU seems to have a box-ticking approach in regards to meeting required demands. Just because a new law is introduced does not mean it is enforced. Thus, the steps taken to join the EU have been slow and lengthy. We're split opinions here because I feel like more educated people are towards the EU because they kind of see the benefits of it and they think that that would get them, I mean, it would kind of benefit our country. But then we have people and some of our politicians are turned towards Russia. So we have people who are very for Russia. I personally would love for Serbia to get into the EU, but it's just been going on for so long that I feel like people are losing hope and they're just like, if anybody mentions EU and Serbia getting into the EU, it's just like, oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, first we need to deal with Kosovo and all of that, which is never going to happen because we're just like, eh, eh, like it's a tug war, you know, no, not, we don't know what's going to happen. Our politicians don't want to tell us anything about it and what their plans are. So I feel like people are losing hope. They're just like, ah, the EU, yeah, the big dream, but it's not going to happen. Yeah. It's that Serbia still has character right now that will kind of vanish when it enters into the EU, but then, you know, at the same time, you have people struggling for survival, going through the bins, you know, people that look like normal people looking for food in the bins. Bosnia's ethnic quarrels remain a worry for the EU, along with corruption and organized crime. The commission says Bosnia is still plagued by an unstable political climate. Unofficial, but I don't think that's going to happen as long as we have three presidents. And the second yeah. you join EU, everyone, all the young kids are just going to leave. The European Court of Human Rights has ruled that Bosnia's electoral laws discriminate against Jews and Roma because only Bosniaks, Croats and Serbs are allowed to run for high office. In mid-March, here in Belgrade, weekly protests against the government of President Aleksandar Vučić had entered their fourth month and several thousand people turned up for a mile-long march across the city. They were demonstrating their frustrations over increasing political violence and democratic backsliding in the country. <laughs> The incident was full of symbolism and was in fact a parallel to the past when nearly 19 years ago on October the 5th 2000 protesters ransacked the same building as part of mass demonstrations that finally overthrew the then president Slobodan Milosevic. <laughs> into a dictator kind of and again well-educated people see that and they can read through his through the things that he says but then you realize that he, what he's saying he's not saying to you because he knows that you are like haha that's funny that's not true he's saying it to the average Serbian person who is really in a bad situation I feel like in most cases and he's giving them hope and he's giving him false like false hope yeah, yeah. yeah, you have to take into consideration that during election time there was this, a lot of bribery happening and people being given food in exchange for their vote um, and that a lot of the people on the street net right now protesting, they were people that couldn't vote at the time, so it's a lot of young people that are now taking action and are now taking to the streets. But, yeah. yeah. Kosovo officially declared independence in 2008, but is still not recognised by Serbia as an independent state. One recent setback between the two countries was the murder in January 2018 of Oliver Ivanovic, an ethnic Serb politician in northern Kosovo. After he was gunned down, talks of normalising relations were further postponed. There has always been a history of violence between the two countries. NATO stepped in in 1999, launching a 77-day air campaign against Serbia, in which many civilians were killed. By the time the Serbians left Kosovo, over a million people have been displaced. Kosovo. Um, wow. Well, it's been going on for, again, for so long that 
people are losing interest in it, even politicians. It's always being mentioned in the news and everybody's always talking about it, but people just like, the news passed by them. It's so, it's just an everyday topic that we, yeah, the people are not interested anymore. There are still those like, very like hard hardcore patriots they're like no Kosovo is Serbia and I am for that like okay yes it is there's a lot of culture there but it's just been going on for so long that I feel like it would be easier for us to just accept the fact that I mean it's already halfway there like it's already halfway a, a, an independent country like we keep asking our politicians what is your plan for it because they keep talking we have a plan for Kosovo we have a plan for Kosovo and they just like skip that question. They don't. They, I don't. I feel like they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. And it's people want answers, but the yeah. politicians won't give them answers about it. To conclude my documentary, I asked my interviewees what they would say to people who are still viewing the Balkans in its past and are too apprehensive to travel there, and what they believe the Balkans has to offer. Yes will travel to America or Asia or Africa or whatever to experience a different culture and spend thousands of euros on that way you can stay on the same continent and experience such a radically different culture and I don't know it's just it's so different from being in Germany or being in Dublin being here for eight years you see so many things I would have never seen growing up anywhere else you know sure it is a little different it is we're more relaxed from what yeah. I feel uh, yeah, it, 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 it is a special place. More opportunity, uh, more uh, more money. More money. Yeah, yeah. More good connections. Yeah. More friendships. We do have a lot to offer. I feel like people here are very welcoming and nice. We have great food. We have a lot of history, and I feel like we're a me who likes history. I'm very proud of it. Be bigger and bigger. More people coming uh, every year uh, from everywhere. It's a lot of tourists now from China, from yeah. Israel, a lot of people from abroad, from Europe. Uh, yeah. And uh, every year it's more and more tourists coming here. Yeah. I mean, it's such a nice place. I really love it. Because you could, you could come here and just have the best time of your life. I haven't heard about the people that came here for a weekend, but everyone that has come here has been like, this place is so awesome. <laughs> um, because it's so different from everything. It's kind of, it's its own thing. It's relaxed and everything is very familiar. Families and everyone is so nice. Because of the rivers, mountains, lakes around. Yeah. It's really nice. And nature. it's something everyone should come to see. Yeah. It's, it's sort of like a little bit of a time capsule that you walk through. Yes, yeah. yeah. There's that prejudice of Serbia and people who've heard of it, heard it through the war we've had in yeah. the 90s and people get scared about that um, and I feel like we just need to advertise ourselves more and we are doing that I've seen more tourists in the last five years than I've, like, I've seen before The tourism sector could provide big chances and opportunity to increase economic well-being of people in the region The World Travel Organization has stated that Bosnia has the third highest tourism growth rate in the world continuing up to the year 2020 The tourism industry here has witnessed double digit growth in visitors since the year 2000 which continues to look hopeful for the future After visiting the Balkans myself I believe it is a unique region with rich history and beautiful landscapes. I've also met many young talented individuals who have allowed me to share their experiences. I don't think there is anywhere in the world quite like it and I'm telling everyone to look at the Balkans as it is in the present.